According to the Center for Disease Control, 7.3 million people in the U.S. have trouble becoming pregnant. Infertility is considered a disease, and many of these couples don't know what to do or where to turn. National Infertility Awareness Week was initiated in an effort to help educate the public on diagnosis and treatments. And here to tell us more about all of this is Dr. Alice Domar. Dr. Domar, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about the survey that you helped design that Merck just sent out. What were the results? The results basically confirmed what a lot of us have been thinking, that infertility is extremely common. There are over 7 million people in the country who are experiencing infertility. I think the surprising results of the survey was that about half of the people weren't in treatment yet, but of the people who were in treatment, 90% regretted having waited so long. The average person, I think, took 1.8 years before they saw a physician, and they really wish they'd seen a doctor sooner. Now, is that because Obviously, people hope, well, you know, it just takes a little bit of time. Right. Let nature run its course. Well, you know, we're all so optimistic. You know, people mm -hmm. want to believe they can do it the old-fashioned way. And honestly, it's more fun to do it the old-fashioned way. But the fact is, if you aren't pregnant within 6 or 12 months of trying on your own, it's very unlikely you will get pregnant on your own. And so you want to see a physician quickly. And obviously, the age of the parents is a factor. Yes. So Huge. if you are over 35, should you be more concerned? Yes. I mean, the guidelines right now are if, if the woman, and the, it's the age of the woman that's somewhat more important, mm -hmm. if the woman is under 35, you can wait a year before you see a specialist. If the woman is 35 to 40, you should only wait six months. And if the woman is over 40, you should only wait three months before seeing an infertility specialist. Wow. So that's, so, have these recommendations changed? Yes, they have. I mean, they I have. think the, you know, in the good old days, they, people used to say, wait a year and see what happens. And now when we see really what the impact of age has, we are realizing that you can't afford to wait. Right. And I, I think also as treatment has become more effective, I mean, a study came out a couple months ago that when couples were offered, you know, the best treatment had to offer, 90% of them got pregnant. Yeah, well, let's talk so. about this. Because this is, this is <laughs> obviously we're making babies. the yeah. good news here. Right. The good news is that there are more and more treatments and they are more yes. effective than yes. ever. So yes. what are the options out there for couples having trouble getting pregnant? Well, it depends what the diagnosis is. I mean, one of the reasons that it's so important to see a physician a specialist quickly is to figure out what the diagnosis is because about 90% of people will have a, a, a reason for their infertility. And, you know, and, and if you have a reason for your infertility, that also means you're not going to get pregnant on your own. So it could be an issue with a woman. It could be equally likely to be an issue with the man. Right. I, I, I think I saw some statistics. It's 30% the woman, 30% the man. Then like 15 or 20% combined. Right. And then about 10% unexplained. Right. But it's, you know, one of the myths about infertility is it's always a woman's issue. And in fact, it's just as likely to be an issue with him as it is with her. And so one of the things you need to figure out quickly is what's the problem. So you should both be getting tested. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the, one of the huge things that, that really is, a, is a, a horror of mine mm -hmm. is when you see a woman who's been worked up and is treated and no one has checked him out. Right. And She's it, gone through the ringer. And and no it's, one, yeah. I mean, I've seen patients go all the way to surgery before checking him, which oh. is just not, I mean, that's why you want to see an infertility specialist. Absolutely. Because they would never do that. They always check the man at the very beginning. Absolutely. Do. So let's talk about the treatments available, let's say, if it is a, an issue of a woman okay. of a certain age who is perhaps okay. having trouble producing fertile eggs. Okay. I mean, and that's the issue. As women age, right. their, their eggs tend to be less viable. Um, and so if she's not ovulating, you can give her medication pills that actually induce ovulation. And the pregnancy rates are, are, are lovely for that. Then they have is to... Is that like Clomid? It's like Clomiphene or okay. other medications okay. like that. Um, if her tubes are blocked, which is another common cause of infertility, her options include either having surgery to unblock her tubes or, or sort of bypassing the situation and going to in vitro fertilization. And, you know, IVF is the, is the highest tech, but it's at this point by far the highest per cycle right. pregnancy. I mean, if, if the average fertile couple starts trying to get pregnant, they probably have about a 20% chance per cycle. At the end of a year, they have less than a 5% chance on their own. But the average couple who goes into IVF probably has a 40% per month chance. A huge it's improvement. A huge in improvement, yeah. Now let's talk about men. What is the most likely cause of infertility in men? Is it low sperm count? There are three things you look at in sperm. One is the count. Okay. The other is the motility, which is the ability to swim in the right direction. And the third is called morphology, which is the percentage of, of normally shaped sperm. 
And so to have an, a normal semen analysis, you have to be within the normal range on all three. All three. So if any one of those is off, and you know, depending on how severe it is, if it's not so severe, they can simply do inseminations. Mm -hmm. If it's more severe, they do a, a variant of IVF called ICSI, which is extremely successful. And how does that work? Well, they have the woman undergo a regular IVF cycle, and they extract her eggs, and then they literally inject one sperm into each egg. It's called ICSI. It's incredible and to watch. And then they take the fertilized egg they, and re-inject it, it into they, And they put it into her uterus, and very high pregnancy rates wow. for that treatment. It's, so it's, it's a revolutionized male factor, and that was about 16 years ago. It's amazing. There certainly are a lot of options right now. But how much does cost play a part in all of this? Because for a lot of couples, this could yeah. be beyond their means. And, and some of the treatments might be beyond their means, yeah. but some of the treatments are very inexpensive. I mean, for example, if she's simply not ovulating regularly, mm -hmm medication can be $35 a month. Right. So right. we think of it as, oh my God, it's so expensive. And some states do cover IVF. Yes, some states do. I think there are nine states that cover right. IVF. And you know, a lot of times your insurance covers more than you think it does. You really need to read the fine right. print. Well, the good news is that there are lots of options as as couples age, because couples more and age. more couples yes. are trying to have children yes. at a later age. So Absolutely. the science is keeping up. Very much so. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Nomar. Great to Thank you. speaking with you today. And for more information on this topic and others, log on to the health page at abcnews.com for all the latest health news.